You may recall the case of Paivi Resonen in Finland. She was the Christian member of the parliament there who was prosecuted in June of 2019 under hate speech laws for merely expressing a biblical understanding of marriage and sexuality on social media, uh, in a radio interview, and in a pamphlet that was some 20 years old. Well, thankfully, the District Court of Helsinki saw right through all the bogus charges against Pivey, and the court handed down a unanimous acquittal. But sadly, this story is not yet concluded with a good ending. Finnish authorities are now at it again, targeting Pivey again, and putting her on trial for a second time in the Finnish Court of Appeals. Clearly and sadly, freedom of religion and freedom of speech has double jeopardy principles, and that doesn't seem to exist in Finland. We're here to go over the latest in all of this is Paul Coleman. He's the executive director of Alliance Defending Freedom International. Paul, welcome back to Washington Watch. It's an honor to have you. Thank you for having me on. Well, listen, for those in our audience who may not have heard of this particular case, who is Pivey? And uh, just kind of give us the, the general lowdown on the, the case here. Yeah, Pivey is a long-standing member of the Finnish parliament. In fact, there are almost no one who has been in the Finnish parliament longer than she has now, well over a quarter of a century. Uh, she's a committed Christian. Uh, she expresses her Christian beliefs very openly. Um, she served as a government minister in a number of other senior roles over a quarter of a century in public office. And in 2019, the Finnish Lutheran Church decided to become an official sponsor of the Helsinki Pride Parade. Now, Paivi is a member of the church. Her husband is a pastor in the church. And she felt like she wanted to say something. So she took a picture of some Bible verses, posted them on Twitter, and eventually asked how could the decision of the Finnish Lutheran Church align with the clear teaching of Scripture. And from that moment, the police then started investigating her, um, essentially accusing her of uh, committing hate speech uh, for referring to um, homosexual behavior as a sin. Um, and then they found a pamphlet that she had written over 20 years ago. Um, and started investigating that as well. And then as she was discussing all of these things on public radio, they pulled out two minutes of a, a one-hour debate, took it out of context, and made that into a, a charge as well. So she faces these three charges for hate speech simply for expressing her Christian beliefs on marriage and human sexuality. And the whole thing has been going on now for almost four years, in fact, over uh, four years. She's been dragged through the courts, hours of police interrogation, all for express, expressing her deeply held beliefs. Okay, so let's get to the bottom of this. What's really going on? You know, I think there's a lot of Americans who may be under the impression that European nations are just as free as we are here in the States. But, yeah, you know, it's not obviously not necessarily so. But tell us, why is the Finnish government targeting that's really what is going on here. Why are they targeting Pivy and her Christian faith? What's really going on? Well, we see this whole theme of censorship across the Western world right now. So we, we've talked a lot about cancel culture. We see it on college campuses. We see it on social media. What's different in Europe and other Western nations is we have a lot of criminal laws that uh, censor speech as well. We call these hate speech laws. And they're essentially like a modern Western secular equivalent of blasphemy laws. And so if you say the wrong thing, if you go against the political or the cultural orthodoxies of the day, then these laws can be twisted and used and turned against you. And they're so subjective that they can really be arbitrarily enforced by the right police, the right prosecutor, anyone who disagrees with your beliefs. And so in, in the US and other places, we see the same sort of censorship uh, mentality. The difference is in Europe and a lot of other countries, we have criminal laws backing that up. So what's next for this case? Where, where do you foresee this going from here? So it is being appealed, as you said, um, which is unheard of in a, in a U.S. system. Or I'm a British uh, lawyer, and it's unheard of in my system. There's a few countries that allow criminal cases to be appealed, much like civil cases. So this is an appeal. 
um, essentially the case is being retried. If we win again, which we pray we will, it could still go on then to the Supreme Court of Finland. Um, and of course, were we to lose at this stage, we would certainly appeal. And therefore, we're not done yet. So here we are four years in. It could well be um, at least another year that we're still battling this case. And what we often say in these hate speech cases is that the process becomes the punishment because it's such an ordeal to have to defend yourself like this. It's such an ordeal to be dragged through the court, to be interrogated by the police, that even if we eventually win and these charges um, are not successful and Pravey is acquitted, there will be many other people watching on thinking, well, I've got to be careful what I say because I don't want to have to go through the same ordeal. And so the prosecution itself creates a chilling effect for everyone else looking on. And that's why, firstly, it's important that we win the case. But secondly, we have to be bold in using our freedom of expression and making sure that these cases aren't brought in the first place. And real quickly, where can people go to get updates on this case? So we'll be on our ADF International's uh, Twitter handle. We'll be um, providing live updates from the trial starting tomorrow. The courthouse is right behind me. And our website, adfinternational.org slash free speech on trial.